For over 40 years, Tippecanoe has had some very special residents, thanks to the vision of Purdue ethologist, Dr. Eric Klinghammer. After studying the animal behavior of doves, an encounter with a fellow ethologist's wolf changed his career. When she met him, he realized, yes, it looks like a dog, but she's definitely not a dog. She's something different. And he always remembered that. And that, plus his interest in conservation and the need to find a new species to study, all kind of came together after he had moved out here and was teaching at Purdue because he had land where he could keep animals like wolves. And so he knew George and Mary Rabb at the Brookfield Zoo. They'd been studying wolves, and he got two wolf puppies from them, and that was the start of Wolf Park. Established in 1972, the 75-acre facility provided the perfect environment for Klinghammer's research. Together, he and his fellow Wolf Park colleagues published the first Wolf Ethnogram, an encyclopedia of wolf behaviors, vocalizations, and pack dynamics observed for the first time thanks to his pioneering techniques of socialization for wildlife in captivity. He was familiar with this idea of hand raising socialized animals that will treat you like a social companion and so you can study them up close. We found that the only way we can compete with this inborn recognition of and preference for real adult canines as opposed to human foster parents is to take the puppies away from their mother when they're less than 21 days old and bottle raise them. So our wolves frequently get to go back and, and be with their mother again for visits. And then if we do our job properly, by the time they're four months old, they can go in with the adults to live, and yet they retain their, their strong attachments to humans. And this pays them and us back very much over the span of their lifetime. It takes a lot of the stress out of being forced into proximity with humans by being in captivity because it offers more opportunity for enrichment. We go in there and we do a little free training, sometimes behavior management training and training for medical husbandry while we're at it and social grooming. When we come in, they will often want to rally with us. A rally is a greeting ceremony that they do with each other and they will come around and they will want to muzzle greet it creates an environment where through things like operant conditioning, we can make them more comfortable with certain procedures and we can direct their behavior and, and channel it. Visitors to the park can get an up-close perspective with guided tours, wolf handling demonstrations, and even howl night, where audiences have an opportunity for a sing-along with the wolves. but these are not domestic animals. To ensure their safety, each handler must go through extensive training. This conscientious approach has helped provide valuable ongoing data for field studies around the world. The research is important because the more you understand about wolves, the more you understand what their needs are and whether, say, if you wanted to introduce wolves into a certain environment, whether they could thrive there or whether they were going to have difficulties. He wanted to awake Americans to the necessity and wisdom of preserving their remaining wilderness. Wolves are a great ambassador animal to speak for their species and also they can sort of serve as a canary in the coal mine for how we're treating our, our wilderness and other large predators. One of the best examples has been the Yellowstone National Wolf Park Project which reintroduced wolves 60 years after they were killed off by humans. In mere decades, the wolves have revitalized the Yellowstone ecosystem, everything from streams to songbirds. And Dr. Klinghammer was a direct inspiration. The leader of the Yellowstone Project, Douglas Smith, first studied wolves as a high school volunteer at Wolf Park. And it is great testament to the park's ongoing mission. For a lot of families, a trip to Yellowstone or someplace comparable might be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And he really wanted to make a place where uh, researchers could come and study animals. And he also wanted it to be a place where the public can come because he realized that if we don't let people form connections with wildlife and with wilderness, and some people can't get to the wilderness, but maybe if they know animals that they've seen at the zoo or at some place like Wolf Park, they'll think, you know, 
I would feel really badly. I think the earth would be diminished if we killed off all wolves or all humpbacked whales or all grizzly bears. This is one of these things where we're kind of throwing a rock into the water and we can't see from where we're standing how far the ripples will spread. I hope that we will keep children connected with nature and the wilderness and we hope that when they grow up and are old enough to vote that they will keep up on um, laws that are likely to affect how we treat our remaining wilderness areas and the animals that live in them and vote to preserve them.